actually the spring book. In the beginning, on us, our Creator's plan called for a people in our motherland. People know thyself, people know thyself. Self determination grows from nothing else. Abaragani, Wahota Sing, Kujichagalia, Ujima, Ujima, Nia, Kaumba, Imani. How are you? Good afternoon. You're live here with Papa Al Kabalan. We're here again and we're going to talk about. You've got to get your heart right, which is a phrase that came from my mom. Everybody might remember, you know, their dad, their mom, their uncle, their grandmother had a phrase. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So I'm opening up. Here I have Miss Mariana Souza. Now, Miss Mariana Souza is someone that I've known since she was a little girl. Here she is there. She'll probably be embarrassed that I'm showing her. But here. All these kids now, Camille and, and um, oh man, I can't, I'm, I'm drawing blanks. There's uh, Andrew and then there's, I think this is, um, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank with all these kids. If they would walk in today, I'm, I'm, I'm Facebook friends with some of them. Ashia, that's Ashia. And, and this is Camille's brother, Deshaun, and there's Shingarai. And a young Charles Gwynn. This is a, at the old building in Wolsey. And uh, so I've known Mariana since she was a little girl. And so now she's doing these shows. Uh, I think it's called Sundown Sundays or, you know, where she's, where she's just talking. And one of the things that she was talking about was she mentioned the term know thyself. And when she was a young girl at our at our church, Wose, Wose Community Church, uh, we taught from the book Stolen Legacy to know yourself. Know yourself because that's what Dr. Chancellor, Wood, excuse me, Dr. George Jim James says. Now, Mariana, she's really closely akin. She, she has an affinity for this netter, Sekhmet. She, this really, she kind of lives by Sekhmet, she's a Leo, uh, Sekhmet is a lioness. And this is actually a picture that was taken in the shrine of Shek Sekhmet in, in Kemet uh, by uh, the, the, the Luxor Temple. So in Stolen Legacy by George G.M. James, he says this. He says, <laughs> my wife is sitting, <laughs> I hope nobody can see that. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He says, every schoolboy believes that when he hears or reads the command, know thyself, he is hearing or reading words which were uttered by Socrates. But the truth is that the Egyptian temples carried inscriptions on the outside addressed to neophytes, and among them was the injunction, know thyself. Socrates copied these words from the Egyptian temple and was not the author. All mystery temples inside and out of Egypt carry such inscriptions just like the weekly bulletins on our modern churches. And so we, you know, we had not been to Kemet necessarily, but when we were reading that, I don't know if Dr. George Jim James had been to Kemet, but he, he was very advanced in Greek studies. And so he just uh, took it that the term know thyself is actually coming, it was actually written on the Egyptian temple. Now, I came across this phrase, and people uh, post all kind of things on Facebook, and they post them like they're the gospel, like they're, like they're the truth, but you really have to like distinguish between the real and the unreal, and you really have to distinguish between right and wrong. So looking at this, and, and I was looking at it, so it says, the body is the temple of God's within you, therefore it is said, man, know thyself. And, you know, it's put, it's put on parchment paper, and it looks very authentic. And when I look here at this Medunetra or Suf language, and I'm 
I'm able to, to, to look at the transliteration. It actually uh, fits that. And so when we say transliteration, so what you do is, uh, when you're looking at Medu Neto or Sufi language in general, whichever way the characters are facing, that's where you begin to read. So if the bird is facing to your left, that's where you start. See, all these characters are looking that way, so that's where you start. And so this box is a P, and uh, this here is an A, and you, you know, so I, I can I can make it out. I'm not I'm not that advanced as as other people, but I can make it out. But I I wanted to verify it because if I'm presenting something at our church, if I'm presenting to even just somebody in, in casual conversation, I want to be correct. So I sent it to a person that I uh, trust, and his name is uh, Ray Davis. And I'm going to get to Ray in a minute. But the term, the, the phrase that we're using, you got to give your heart right, got to get your heart right, comes from my mom. And this is a young picture of my mom. Her name is Virginia Bell. Virginia Bell. And people call her Jenny. People call her Ginger Bell. And then my sister got this really nice frame for this picture of her. And here she is. This was on. Uh, this was a birthday. And uh, yeah, I know. Pretty mommy, huh? Uh, yeah, beautiful mom. Beautiful. Beautiful mom. And uh, then later on in her life, she put on this. She's because she knew I was into African stuff, and she said I could I could wear something African. So here she is in front of our house. So she's so she put on this. Uh, this uh, African cloth. And then, okay, I can't show my mom without showing her mother, which we all call mother. And mother was wearing bling back in those days. She had a gold tooth <laughs> in her mouth. And so, so mom's phrase was, you got to get your heart right. You know, she would, she would say, you know, basically you got to be right. You know, you, you, you've got to get your heart right. But mother's phrase was, You've got to use your own brains. You, you, you know, I'm talking mother wit today. You've got to use your own brains, which, which what she was saying was, you, if you use your own brains, you'll always be happy. But if you use somebody else's brains, then you'll never be happy. And so that was her way of saying, think for yourself. You know, so I think the highest that, mother went in school was ninth grade which was was something Mo mother was born in 1911 so mm. which which was something and she and she grew up in Tyler Texas Tyler uh, excuse me Tyler was the larger town I think she she was born in Overton Texas which is another smaller town we're talking uh, you know these places are like a hundred miles away from Dallas anyway I can't show mother without showing Gran. This is my father's mother. This is Gran. And Gran, her phrase to me was, you're my sun, moon, and stars. So, got to use your own brains. Got to get your heart right. So these are things that, you know, when you talk to your children or your grandchildren or any any child that you're influenced, you can, you can utter these powerful little mantras, these little maxims to them, and believe it or not, it sinks in, and, and it's, it's how they live when they grow up. So, got to get your heart right, use your own brains, you're my sun, moon, and stars. So back to this. So I, I was looking at this uh, parchment, and, and you know, it seemed like it was right, but I, I needed to get some verification. So I sent it to uh, one of my teachers who I call Saba, and his name is uh, Ray Davis. And so I showed it to Ray and Ray was like, uh-uh. He was like, nope. He says, I said, what well, I said, well, is the translator? He says, he says, hey, look, I don't even want to touch this. He said, because I don't want to perpetrate a fraud. I said, okay, man, I, I understand. I appreciate your, your candor, your, your honesty for that. And then um, oh, a few years ago, uh, Faye Kennedy uh, was given the, the first book fair that she gave, Black Book Fair in Sacramento. And she said, Imhotep, 
Dr. Milana Karinga is coming in to Sacramento with his wife. Uh, would you be able to pick him up from the airport and take him to his, his hotel and, uh, you know, you know take, bring him to the exhibits? And I said, is this a trick question? Of course. And so I, I picked him up from the airport and, and we just had a great time, you know, him and his wife, Tia Mo Moyo. And when I was taking them back, th here we are on stage at the, um, at the Gill Street Theater. And uh, I, I asked him, you know, as I was taking him back, he came in on a Friday and I was taking him on, on Sunday. I said, hey, um, the phrase, know thyself, do you know what uh, temple that's found in Egypt? And he was like, well, brother, you, you know, you got to read the text. He said, that's, that's from the, I'm sorry, I'm doing him like that, but that's what he sounded <laughs> like. Uh, that's that's from the uh, uh, you know the Greek. That's that's on the Temple of Delphi. So, oh wow! You know he kind of he kind of smiled to himself, but he was gentle with me. He was like, eh, "You gotta do some more research, young blood." Basically, that's what he was saying. You know. So I went in, and now so I went to the Temple of, of Delphi, and this is the Temple of Delphi in Greece, and you know it looks like it it was pretty impressive back in its day, you know? And uh, this is the inscription, uh, you, you know, there's several different inscriptions, but this is, this is what it says. It says, know thyself. I warn you, whoever you are, O oh, you who wish to probe the, the arcanes of nature, if you do not find within yourself that which you seek, neither shall you be able to find it outside. If you ignore the excellent excellencies in your own house, how do you intend to find other excellencies? It, in you is hidden the treasure of treasures. O oh man, know thyself, and thou will know the universe and the gods. So this is taken from the Greek temple of, of Delphi. And so should we say, okay, well, that phrase is no good. It's not African. It's not African-centered. We should throw it away. No, we need to probe further. So that's what I did. So going back to uh, George G.M. James' Stolen Legacy, he talks about a place called the Grand Lodge of Luxor. And the Grand Lodge, he says that the Grand Lodge was built by Amenophis, which is, okay, a Greek version of Amenhotep III. It was the only Grand Lodge, which, okay, is actually not true. The, the lodge is so big that it could not be built in one person's lifetime. We're talking about a place that you could fit all the temples, all the churches in Europe within this, this temple. It's, it's one of the oldest temples. And uh, Dr. Chancellor Williams says that 5,000 years ago, it was in ruin. So, but continue what he says. He says, that's the Grand Lodge. It had, it, but it had minor lodges in Europe, Asia, Africa, North America, South America, and probably in Australia. These were some of the places. Palestine at Mount Carmel, Syria at Mount Hermon in Lebanon, Babylon, Medea near the Red Sea, India on the banks of the Ganges River, Burma, Athens, Rome, Crouton, Rhodes, Delphi, Del there's Delphi again, Miletus, Cyprus, Corinth, Crete, Central and South America, especially Peru, among the American Indians and among the Mayas, the Aztec, the Incas of Mexico. And then he gives his sources. And then down here, a little bit below it, he says, the rebuilding of the Temple of Delphi. This temple was burnt down in 500... 54 BC, 548 BC, by the Greeks who were always hostile toward the Egyptian mysteries. The brethren tried to raise funds from the native Greeks but failed in attempt. Then they decided to approach the Grand Master Amis of the King of Egypt, who unhesitatingly donated three times as much was needed for the purpose. So, and then he gives his reference. So, there is an ancient comedic, an ancient African connection to the Temple of Delphi, which is based upon 
the major lodge or the Grand Lodge of Luxor or uh, it, it's actually so you know I'm a minister of Wose Community Church Wose the name Wose is actually a, a variation of the word Waset usually it's referred to as Waset and this is the place it was called the most selective places and it's the place where it was a center of education 80,000 students would, could be there at one time you know, so this was a, a seat of learning, but it was also a place where 20,000 chariots could be dispersed at a moment's notice. So just keep on going. So now I had the privilege and honor of going to Kemet uh, a year ago, and I know it's been a year, I'm still talking about it, because it had that, that so much effect on me. There was so much to learn. I, I, you know, and actually I'm planning to go back in 2021. When, when my son graduates from medical school, uh, you know, and, and he's excited, uh, you know, we have some organizers. Um, uh, Brother Stephen Mailers is, is, is looking at organizing something. So it, it looks like it's going to be great. Hopefully I didn't speak out of turn. But anyway, when I was at uh, Kemet, uh, before you go into the Grand La Lodge of Luxor, they have this, they have this scale model. You know, it's, it's really big. You can't see it all in a, in a day. It's, it's, it, there's so much to it. So I don't know if you're getting this, Earth Mother. Mm -hmm. when I'm, so this is, we entered this way, and there's, there's like these uh, ram-headed sphinxes that, that uh, line the courtyard. And you can see a, a, a sort of a, a, a scaled-down version of this. There's a, actually an Egyptian museum here in California in San Jose. It's called the Rosicrucian Museum. And when you come there, they have ram, you know, like certainly not uh, 21 on each side, uh, but um, maybe about six on each side when you come into their uh, museum. All right, so the so this these are the scale models that you see. So they're they're letting you know what's going on. And here, this this gentleman here, this is. Muhammad Fami, and he is such a great teacher, and I've been keeping in touch with him since I've been, and, and he's he's been kind enough to write back. So if I have a question, he'll write back, and so I'll, I'll talk about him a little later. But so here, um, the pylons, uh, the Ibra, or the Tekken, all of these things, are here. the sacred lake, you know, this, so people talk about baptism. This is where people would go to get baptized, in, in, in the school. You would come in and you would get baptized in the sacred lake. All right, well, here, here's Stephen. Here's Stephen Mailer. He's, he's the coolest guy. He, he's, he's the guy that I'm always talking about. He's, he wrote uh, uh, From Light to Darkness and, and The Land of Osiris. And so he's, he's a student of Abdel Hakim Awiyan. All right, so, and again, the sacred lake. So, okay, I think I've shown that enough. So when you get here, here, here's what they actually look like. You're there, ram, ram headed sphinx. And you know what? While I was there, they've actually found uh, a, 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 even a greater avenue of them that links the the Luxor Temple with the Karnak Temple. And so, uh, and, you know, and it, and it goes for like a couple of miles. Can you imagine just a couple of miles? What people just think of the artistry the dedication, the craftsmanship that people were doing back in the ancient times. So here's Fami again, and he's showing us, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's showing us where we're going to go. I put this picture in to show the immensity. You see how, see how big this is? Now, these are, these are people here. See how big those columns are? Nobody really knows. Nobody can really explain fully how they're able to stand there. And here, somebody caught me. I was walking along, and that here I am. So, so just show you. Here's little me, and the, um, I'm walking in, in the columns. So now, we talked about baptism and the sacred lake. Here is, is a picture within that temple, or purba, house of the soul, house of the spirit. And here we see Chihuti, baptizing along with Hor 
or Heru or Horus, an initiate. And the Christians, for some reason, carved out the image of the Christian. But here, we, we used to baptize before John the Baptist that did that. Mm. So, and here's the actual sacred lake. Now, when I was there and I was looking at it, it didn't look too clean. I wouldn't jump in. But, uh, you know, back in the day, they had it all fresh and people did, you, you know, this is where baptism and other ceremonies, they just, they just didn't go swimming. Other ceremonies were there. You got something to say with it? Yeah, is that connected to the, um, the Jews do the mikvah? You know, I, I don't know that. I, I will, I will uh, I research wondered. that, but uh, probably because, you know, Judaism, This see, this was part of our trip. And one of the things that, that Stephen was showing, you know, based upon Hakim's teaching, is that uh, the, the, it wasn't uh, the Jews against the Egyptians. It was the followers of the, of, of the Aten versus the followers of Amen. Mm. And that the per ah Akhenaten, mm -hmm. his high priest was was a man by the name of Ra Moses, and I went to Ra Moses' temple, excuse me, his tomb, and his body is not there, you know. But I saw his his picture, and and there and there are inscriptions at the Ramesseum that is actually showing the the followers of Amen chasing. The followers of Aten, the followers of Aten, later become what we know as the Hebrews. Oh, so you gonna have to break that down. Yeah, but uh, not. To, I get that. Not today. I, I got get a, that. Got I a get different, that. But I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah, okay. So, okay. So that's the sacred lake. Now, I always, I know this. I, I don't do this on purpose, but I always, I'm always mentioning Dr. Obinga. He's like one of my favorite scholars. Dr. Obinga, and when I first heard Dr. Obinga speak, and I closed my eyes, he sounded like Jacques Cousteau, you know, because oh. he, you know, he's he's from um, he's from the Congo. His his native tongue is Lingala, but he speaks like 17 languages. He, he writes in like 12. You know, most most people from the continent, they yeah. they don't they're not monolingual. Mm -hmm. They speak like at least four languages. They could they could they could speak right. So and then he's a scholar on top of it. So. Um, you know, so he has just so much knowledge, vast amount of knowledge. So I want to include him. So one of my favorite books of his is Ancient Egypt and Black Africa, uh, a student's handbook to the study of ancient Egypt mm. in philosophy, linguistics, and uh, gender relations. Linguistics mean what? If somebody says Ling linguistics. linguistics. So, okay, I'm glad you asked that question. So just for instance... So, Dr. Obinga obliterates the argument, you know, because when people read uh, Stolen Legacy, and there were people that, that came, so with the African-centered movement or the Afrocentric movement uh, with Malefi Asante and, and people that were in ASCAC, Associ Association of Classical African Civilization, they... They came out with this large body of knowledge, Van Sertima, Dr. Ben, all these people. And then, but the empire strikes back. So the empire pushes back. And so th this woman by the name of Mir Mary Lifkowitz wrote a book called Not Out of Africa, where she was saying that, okay, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, James was wrong. And then this other guy, uh, Martin Bernal, who wrote Black Athena, uh, were wrong. But Dr. Obinga points out, and I said, and I've said this in previous uh, discussions that that even the word philosophy is not a Greek word. Mm. So this has to do with linguistics. So he breaks down. So he says, okay, it comes from philo, and 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 sophos makes philosophy, love of wisdom, and then so he he does an etymological search. You can do this. Don't do this now while I'm talking. But do this, you can you can do an etymological search on the word philosophy and on the breakdown, you know, okay, from the French, from from Latin, all these things, and then ultimately it will say origin unknown, which means that it can't be explained. So you have a word that's supposed to be a Greek word that can't be explained in Greek or any Indo-European language. So that's what he's 
That's what he's talking about. But he says that Sophos is very close to what the teachers in ancient Kemet were called. They were called Seba. And he go and he breaks it down to instruct, to educate, to learn. And uh, you, you know, this is what the teachers were called. The, the teachers of wisdom uh, were, were told this. And then he then he qualifies it. He says the Egyptians often the Egyptian F often becomes PH in Greek. And then he also says the biliberals P, B, F often correspond to the Greek uh, PH. So they took Saba and turned it into Sof Sophie. Sophie is, is, is a word that means wisdom uh, to the Greeks. But the origin of it, and he breaks it down, the origin of it is in the ancient comedic, ancient commission language. So, uh, thank you for that question, uh, whoever you are. But Dr. Obinga points out here, the reason why I put this on here, Dr. Obinga says, the ancient Greeks traced all human inventions to the Egyptians, from calculus, geometry, astronomy, even dice games, to writing. You know, and then he... Then he he uses Homer, and he uses Aristotle. He says, Aristotle himself, writing in metaphysics, not only refutes Lefkowitz's uh, ahistorical and false assertions, but also confesses in Greek Hellenic language that thus the, the mathematic sciences originated in Egypt. It was the cradle of mathematics. This, think about this, teachers out there, while, while, while our children can't learn math because we're programmed that we can't learn math, it's hard. But here, we've, I won't say we invented it, we discovered it. it was, math is already there. The universe is set up it, as a mathematical construct. You know, the numbers are there. But we were, since we're the first people, African people are the first people, it would, it would definitely follow that we... Are, are the people who would, who would make these discoveries first. Not trying to big up ourselves necess unnecessarily, but these are, just, these are just plain facts. You know, and so, so Dr. Obinga, uh, you know, lists, okay, and, and so he goes down this, this last paragraph. The fact of the matter is that the famous well-known Greeks, Europeans, whom we study and revere in school and curricula today, all studied at the feet of the ancient Egyptians, Africans in the Nile Valley. For example, Plato studied at the Temple of Waset, that's the temple that I showed you, 11 years. Uh, Aristotle was there for 11 to 13 years. Socrates was there for 15 years. Euclid was there for 10 to 12 years. Uh, uh, Pythagoras, you've heard of the Pythagorean theorem, was there for 22 years. Mm -hmm. Solon, Lysurgus, all these people. Because it was prestigious. It was, it was prestigious to go there. It's just like people today, they would go, if they want to go to someplace prestigious and they, and, they, and they had the ability and they had the money, they would go to Harvard or they would go to Cambridge or they would go to the Sabon. You know, they would go to the heavy uh, uh, universities. And so these were the universities of that day. All right. So have I beat that to death yet? So this is the phrase. So we're talking about you've got to get your heart right. It was based upon what Mariana had said, know thyself, but it's really, the re I had to search for this. Really the phrase is, I know what is in my heart. That's the true phrase. I, rec m e m ib e. And here's, here's the medu nature, or the Suf language here at the top. And this is how you uh, you know, transliterate it. And this is, you know, somebody's giving you uh, a, a phonological pronunciation. And this is, I know what is in my heart. Now, this was done by this group here, Medu Nature uh, dash net, Medu dash Nature dot com. But don't go to this site because I, I went to this site. It's not theirs anymore. It's another site. It's like a, a Asian porno site. 
you know, and, and so, yeah, and so, you know, this is what happens when if you don't keep up your sight, you know, other people take it over. So, so save yourself the trouble. Don't, don't go there. Look, search, search on something else, but don't search on that. I was sitting with my wife. I said, look at this. She said, she said, erase it right away. So, you know, cause we don't want people following you. So anyway, moving on, here's, here's Muhammad Fahmy again. And he is, we're here at the uh, Giza Plateau. And uh, the, at the Giza Plateau is, is this uh, beautiful woman here. I said this is a woman. This is a woman. How many people knew that? This is Tef Nudi. She, is, she goes back 54,000 years. 54,000 years. I know that's controversial. But most of us as African-centered scholars, we know, we know this statue as a man, Hor M. Aket. But Fami was pointing out that this, and it's on this side too, so if, it, if it's on one side, it's on the other side, that this is the only place where this is written. And then I was talking to, I was, I was talking to Stephen Mailer about this, and he said that this is a term that's a that's only a new kingdom term. So if you if you study the way that they've written the dynasties, um, um, Manetho of Sabanethos, uh, who it was the person that put the, uh, the 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 chronicles of the kings in what we call dynasties. He divided them up into first through six is considered old kingdom, uh, uh, seven through twelve is considered considered middle kingdom. And then the 13th through the 17th is like an intermediate, intermediate period that the, the Hyksos invasion involves. Some people say 200 years. Some people say it went as far as 400 years. And then beginning at the end of the 17th dynasty, uh, going into the 18th dynasty, you have the new kingdom. And the new kingdom is what most people are familiar with because you have, you have King Tut, you have you have Akhenaten, you have Hatshepsut, you have all of these Queen T you, or, or Queen Tai. You have all of these famous people, uh, you know, during that time, or Ramses or Ramesu uh, the uh, second in the 19th dynasty. But this is the only place where Hor M Aket is found, and it's and it's a new kingdom term. So Fami, he was just really good. So. Here we are. We're still in in, in the um, uh, Luxor uh, 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 area, and he and he broke this down, and he was and and so part of it is going. This is life, and this is the Jed. It means stability, and this is the Waz staff. So for Wose or 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 Waset, the Waz staff with an ostrich feather. That's how you write Wose or Waset. That means authority, and this means health. And he broke this down. He said, it makes my heart happy. And then this, this is the symbol, the ib, happy. So he broke, he broke all that down. And he did it with such ease. So I was, at, you know, so I went to him. And I'm still able to write to him. And so I, so I said, hey, I, I refer to him as Saba as well. I said, hey, Saba, do you know anything about, you, you know, so I, I showed him, um, I sent this to him. And he wrote back and he said, he said the transliteration means, so I was trying to verify if the transliteration was right. He said the transliter translation means I know what is in my heart. He said, but ib also means self, mind, awareness, and consciousness. So it's not only the heart. It means self, mind, awareness, and consciousness. And then, and then I wrote, I said, I asked him, I said, hey, uh, do you know if it's written on any, any uh, purbas or temples or any bas reliefs? Or any? And he said, yes, it is written in old kingdom tombs and some later ones. Give me a few days. I hope I can find it. So, you know, he's the kind of person, he's a tour guide. He's a PhD um, candidate. He has his master's in Egyptology. He is a, um, he's half Nubian. He's just really immersed in the culture. He comes from a family that he doesn't have to live on a, 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 a tour guide's salary. He just does it because he loves the culture. So he's immersed in it. 
And so uh, he g actually goes to the places, maybe take a picture of it, and then sends it to me. So he's, he's just a great tour guide. Uh, and if you ever are going to, to Kemet, you should, look this, you should look this man up, Muhammad Fahmy. He's, he's an excellent tour guide. He lives in Aswan, and you can find him on, on Facebook, Muhammad Fahmy. All right. Okay, have I, have I done enough uh, plugging for that? So I want to move on. I'm, I'm going to the Indus Valley. You know my presentations are eclectic. What's that mean? It means I put a lot of stuff in together because I see a, I see a connection running through a lot of things. So uh, many years ago, I started reading this book called the Upanishads. I used to say Upanishads, but I have an Indian friend that I used to work with. Her name is Darshna, and I would ask her, you know, the correct pronunciation of some of these Sanskrit words, and she said it's Upanishads. So uh, this is a, a book that's called, that, that means sitting close to the teacher, you know, because in the because in the ancient times or just in traditional teaching it was mouth to ear mouth to ear you know and so okay now we can you know we can send emails you, you know you have your you have your student you have your, your child they go to school you can communicate with the teacher on emails but back then you sent them to school and they taught them they had to listen they had to pay attention so that's what Upanishad means sitting close to the teacher and I like that they use this, this symbol here. This is a symbol of, of uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. And here is the actual, you know, and I've showed this before, but I love this because, okay, here's Shiva. He's got his locks, but he's, but he's got his crown there. And here, see, here's some of his locks are hanging out. So it's, so it's Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. And uh, this is a, a heavenly person. So, so back in those ancient days, there were Africoid people living in India. Actually, they're still there. They're referred to as the Dalits. They call themselves the Dalits, but they're referred to sometimes, and you may have heard this, as the untouchables. There's a hundred million of them. All right. So here, I, I put this in to just show you the, the, the size of that of that statue. See here, these little girls standing, standing there. And this is inside a cave, the, Eve, the Elephantine Cave, Ele Elephanta Cave. This is just carved right out of, right out of solid rock. Mm. So, I said all that. I know, I I know, I'm long-winded. So, we're going from the Upanishads, but there, but within the Upanishads, there's this book. The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. And if you want to know anything about meditation, I highly recommend this book. Now you can get, there's a lot of different versions of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali or Patanjali. I've heard, I've heard it pronounced uh, both ways. A lot of people, most people say Patanjali. So the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. This is a great book. And within there, so these sutras, it's is, is divided up into four parts. Uh, and uh, within the third part, I found these words. I'm going to read them to you. I hope, hope it's not too boring, but, I, but we're still talking about you've got to get your heart right. So it says here, concentration may be obtained by fixing the mind upon the inner light, which is beyond sorrow. The ancient yogis believed that there was an actual center of spiritual consciousness called the lotus of the heart, situated between the abdomen and the thorax, which could be revealed in deep meditation. They claimed that it had a form of a lotus and it shone with an inner light. It was said to be beyond sorrow, since those who saw it were filled with an extraordinary sense of peace and joy. From the earliest, from the very earliest times, the masters of yoga emphasized the importance of meditating upon this lotus. The supreme heaven shines in the lotus of the heart. Those who struggle and aspire may enter there, retire into solitude. Seat yourself on a clean spot in an erect posture with your head and neck in a straight line. Control all sense organs, 
bow down in devotion to your teacher, then, med then enter the lotus of the heart and meditate there on the presence of Brahman. So Brahman or Brahma is, is an aspect of, of the creator. It actually means the creator. So you have, you have Brahma, the creator, you have Vishnu, the preserver, and you have Shiva, the resolver, or sometimes the destroyer. So meditate there on the presence of Brahma, the pure, the infinite, and blissful. And then in this other Upanishad that I can't pronounce, it says, within the city of Brahma, which is the body, there is the heart. Within the heart, there is a little house. Th this house had the shape of a lotus, and within it dwells that which should be sought after, inquired about, and realized. What then is it that which dwells within this little house, this lotus of the heart? What is it that, that should be sought after, inquired about, and realized? Even so large as the universe outside is the universe within the lotus of the heart. Within the heart are heaven, earth, the sun, the moon, the lightning, and all the stars. Getting back to what Grand told me, she says, Grand told me, she says, you are, the, you are my sun, moon, and stars. Whatever is in the macrocosm is in this microcosm. All things that exist, all beings, all desires are in the city of Brahma. What then becomes of them when old age approaches and the body dissolves into death? Though old age comes to the body, the lotus of the heart does not grow old. It does not die with the death of the body. The lotus of the heart, where Brahman resides in all his glory, that, not the body, is the true city of God. I'm going to just change it to God. God dwelling therein is untouched by any deed, ageless, deathless, free from grief, free from hunger, free from thirst. His desires are right desires, and his desires are fulfilled. And in the, in the Mundaka Upanishad, it says, within the lotus of the heart, he dwells where the nerves meet like spokes of a wheel. Meditate upon him as Om, and you may easily cross the ocean of darkness. In the effusion, lotus of the heart dwells, effusion is a word that means bright light. In the effusion, lotus of the heart dwells Brahma, passionless, indivisible. He is pure. He is the light of all lights. The knowers of Brahma attain to him. And then, so, and it goes on. So, mom was right. You got to get your heart right. And here I included some lotuses. And, and the lotus is, is, a, is a flower that's used in many places, including ancient Kemet and in India. And, and the lotus is similar because the lotus is in the muck and mire. It's in, it's in mud. But when that light comes, it, it arises up out of, the, out of the waters, out of the muck and mire, and becomes this beautiful beautiful bud within the lotus of he within the lotus of the heart he dwells as pure delight mom ginger bell told me you've got to get your heart right I don't think mom had read the Upanishad I don't know she was a very unique woman we had a juicer in the 60s we drank alfalfa tea we, we drank dandelion root tea my mom was very ahead of her time in, in, many, in many respects. So we talked about uh, we, uh, what I read kind of gave the allusions to what we know as the chakras. And so here's a uh, picture. So on, on either side is the Ida and the Pringala. The Ida and the Pringala. And they, and they go up the spine, and then the center is this thing called the Shashuna. That's where that, uh, well, you've heard of Kundalini, that's where, that's where it grows. Now, uh, there's, uh, according to mystics, yogis, the Hindu tradition, there are what's called 72,000 nadis. And these, and these, are, these are the 72,000 nadis. Or, or um, you know, 
energy pathways. And so, and they culminate and they coalesce in seven centers. There's, so there's actually 114 chakras or wheels, but the chakras are not wheels. They actually form in the shape of a triangle. And in the heart one, it forms a triangle going up and a triangle going down because the heart. And so this is the origin of what we call the Star of David. Triangle going up, the, the, the aspiring uh, person that has descended into flesh, the triangle going down, the spirit descending into flesh. And it makes that six-pointed star. And so it forms these, I love this picture. It's got this dread brother, and he's sitting in a lotus. And so he, these are the, the, the centers that we, that we know. Muladhara, the root chakra, Swanistara, Stana, the spleen chakra, Manipurika, the the uh, uh, you know the solar plexus, the Anahata, which is the which is the heart chakra, and they're all associated with different colors. Visuddhi, the blue. Agna, which is which most people deal with when they talk about the pineal gland or third eye. And then there's a chakra that's actually outside the body. It's called the Sahastra, which is the thousand petal lotus. And so, you know, you can you can meditate to to raise your energies to all these centers. But between the Agna and the Sahastra, you have to jump. You have to you have to take a leap of faith in your in your meditate. All right. Now, a lot of people that, that listen to us, they're Christians, and so they want to know, is it in the scriptures? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's in the scriptures. So, here, Matthew twenty two thirty seven, 37, Jesus said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Well, firstly, Jesus is not his name. All right, yes, the sweet name of Jesus. Uh-huh. Why do I say that? It's because, okay, here it says, Jesus is not a pure Greek name, as there is no J in Greek. Yeshua name begins with an iota. This is transliterated as Isus, Iasus, Iasus, okay? And uh, then, but, but they were speaking a language which is called Aramaic, or, or some people say Aramic, Aramaic. You know, it's, it's, it's from the, the Lebanese, Syrian area. And so if there was a Jesus the Christ, he was speaking Aramaic. I'm sure he knew Greek, I'm sure he knew Hebrew, but the lingua franca or the language that they spoke was, was Aramaic. So in Aramaic, his name is Yeshua. Sometimes, sometimes we write it with an E, sometimes we write, write it with an A. And you know, you can do, you can do some research on it, okay? It's, there's so many, there's so much on it, but I just want you to know you know, uh, and I know I'm going to get some people that are going to disagree with me, but, which is fine. But you can you can research it yourself, okay? No J's in Greek, and and then it didn't enter until uh, the 14th century A.D. So 1,400 years after a person is supposed to be born, you see the J enter his name, and, and it became Jesus. So here. This uh, slide gives the evolution. So this is how it's written in Hebrew, and then it goes to Greek, and then it goes to Latin. See, they didn't even have it. They didn't even have any uh, use. They used V. And then in the modern English, it became Jesus. Okay, and then you know it breaks breaks it down here. So trans. Transliterated Yeshua. 
All right, and so, and when you, you, you know, so now these letters, you know, you know, Greek and Roman letters, they have a numerical value to them, you know? So when you're in school, you're taught Roman numerals, you know? One, they're, they're really slash marks. So one, they put a slash one. Two, they put a slash two. Three, you know, and so on. And, and so each one has a numerical value and you add it up. You add up, you add up Jesus' name, it comes up to 888, which is a number representing the sun. All right, now just moving on, uh, you know, just to show you how languages travel. So I'm not starting with the comedic, I'm starting with, with which, which is referred to in this as Proto-Canaanite, Ugartic, Phoenician, this is the way the languages go. And then it goes to Aramaic, and then Syriac, Hebrew, Nabataean. You know, this is the way languages go. And from the Phoenician, the Proto-Arabic. And, and, you know, so just, and, and from Nabataean, Arabic, and then Persian. This is the way the language travels. So, and it's just like, you think of African people being brought to these shores. One of the things that they did, they changed our names. Names are very important. In George G.M. James, Stolen Legacy, he talks about the nine parts of the soul. And one of them, one of the parts is the wren. The wren is the name. So the name is very important. The name is, is very important to your soul. So I, we have a, a member at our church, um, we'll say, and uh, her name is Karen, Ka-Ren. So she has a comedic name. She doesn't need to change her name. She has a comedic name, the Ka and the Ren, soul name. So getting back to Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, 37, it says, and Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And then it has references in Deuteronomy, um, and then, uh, you know, Matthew and uh, 1 John uh, 4, uh, 21. So you can do a search. You can do a search on this scripture and find this. So now what's going on? So uh, the marriage and resurrection. So Jesus, you know, according to the Western canon, he's teaching. And as he's teaching, there's th and this is what I find sometimes, there's always going to be somebody that's trying to trip you up and trying to find out, trying to find the one little thing that you said that they can turn around or they can convolute. So this is, what, this is what's happening in this case. So Jesus was teaching, and then the Sadducees. Now, within uh, the Jewish uh, religion and faith, you had these teachers of the law. You had, you had one group, the Sadducees. They were like the Republicans. They were, they were uh, conservative. And then you had the Pharisees, and they were a little bit more liberal. The Sadducees, they didn't believe in life after death or life after They just thought when you die, you're just dead, and, that's, and there's no more to you at all. But the uh, Pharisees uh, believed that there was life after death and there was an afterlife, etc. So they were asking him, they said, hey, what about if a woman dies and then... Uh, but excuse me, what if, what if a man is married to a woman and then he dies and they had no children and then his brother married her and then, his, then, then he dies and, and, you know, on seven times. You know, so they were trying to trip him up. So uh, he said, hey, man, you know what? It's, it's not even about that. This, this, that it, it ain't nobody going to be getting married in heaven. You know, you're not going to have no bodies. It's, you know, it, it, it's, it's not about that. You know, he says, he says, you're in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given into marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Remember, we talked about one of our meetings. Angel is angle or, or angles of light. But about the resurrection of the dead, you have not read what God said to you. I am the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is not a God of the dead, but a God of the living. So he, you know, so he, uh, he shut them up. And uh, 
We do have a question from the room. Brother oh. Sean said, uh -huh. could you say one of the reasons to get your heart right could be a reference to getting your heart right? Um, make it lighter than a feather or that afterlife oh, to be measured Be on the beautiful, scale of my eyes. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, hey, who is that? Who wrote Sean. that? Sean, get out of my head Gilfax. because I, cause that's the next slide, man. What are you talking about? So let me just finish. So, so Jesus was, was, was you know, so the, so the Sadducee asked Jesus this question, and so he gave a good answer. So the Pharisee, hey, you know, this man knows something. Let me ask him some questions. So he says, what's the greatest commandment? And he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. This is the greatest commandment. So I get into Sean's question, and I didn't plant Sean. I don't think I even know Sean, but I'm glad you asked that question. So yes, so the ib is placed in this in this vessel here, and see this. So this ani, he he's been he has passed on, and so here he is before the divine judges, and his ib, his heart, his mind, his consciousness is placed upon the feather of truth, Mott. And he is saying the 42 declarations of innocence. And he is and he is weighing out. And he is and he is he's he's been found justified. He's be, he's been found what's called Ma Karu or true of voice. And Tahuti or Jehuti is 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 writing it down. He's recording everything. And then here he is, you know we're told that Saint Peter has the keys to heaven. But here, Hor, or Heru, or Horus, he's got the key to heaven, and he's taking him to the judge of the living and the dead. And then backing him up is two sisters, Aset, or Isis, and Nebhet, or Nephthys. And here they are back. And he's sitting, for those, for you Masons, he's sitting on the square. Uh-oh, what happened? He's sitting on the square. Whoops. Get that. All right. <laughs> the James Brown lyrics going on. Ha! Right. <laughs> so now, in the Hussia, it says this. It says, Oh, my heart, my mother, my heart, my mother, my heart, whereby I come into being, stand not up against me as, as a witness, nor oppose me in the council of judgment. Weigh not heavy against me before the keeper of the balance. You are my divine essence which dwells in my body, the divine power which makes strong my limbs. When you come forth in the place of happiness where we go, may you not cause my name to send forth an offensive odor before those assign, those who assign people to their rightful place. May it be favorable for us and the hearer be favorable to us and there be joy at the weighing of the words. Let not falsehood be uttered against me before the great God, for surely your righteousness will cause you to rise up and try. It's talking to his heart. It's saying, hey, I'm, I'm here. Don't send me to hell. And, here, and see, if you don't weigh out, you go to the eater of the dead, and here, you know, look at his body. It's like, it's like a crocodile, a lion, a hippopotamus. You do not want to see him on the other side. All right. Okay. As we close today, thank you for joining us, all of you that, that were able to make it today, and we're going to send it out. Um, our, our theme today is you've got to get your heart right. Coming from my mom, Virginia Bell Harvey, got to get your heart right. And who knew, who knew that she had so much wisdom in that phrase that it goes back to the Nile Valley, goes back to the Indus Valley. And instead of man, woman, know thyself, it's I know what is in my heart. Hope you uh, gained some knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Ankh Ujab Saneb, life, prosperity, and health live up.